Hello everybody, Dr. Darog here, and today we're going to be going over the Thomcraft mod. Now, Thomcraft's been around for a long time, a few years, and uh, it's a huge magic-based mod. So we're going to jump right in and uh, show you how to get started with Thomcraft and show you all the basics. So the first thing you're going to need in order to get started with Thomcraft is iron. So we're going to take some of our iron here and turn it into nuggets. Now that we've got our iron nuggets, we're going to go ahead and take and place them in the crafting grid in a helmet shape and create some iron caps. Take those iron caps and put them on either side diagonally like this, a stick in the middle, and you will create an iron capped wooden wand. So this is the first thing that you're going to need in Thomcraft is, in, is the iron capped wooden wand, and it is the most basic form of the wand. Now you'll notice that there's a nice little GUI in the top left corner while I'm holding my wand. Uh, basically this GUI will tell you how much magical power is in your wand and if it's um, prepared to cast any spells using a wand focus. The first thing you want to do with your wand without requiring any magical power inside of it is to place a bookshelf in the world or find a bookshelf in the world. And right click on it with your wand and you'll create the Thaumonomicon. Now that you've got your first Thaumonomic on, uh, you can go ahead and open it up and take a look around, and all of the basics are really in here. Uh, I'm going to cover the most important vital ones for you to know, but if there's anything you don't know, you can probably figure out in the Thaumonomic on. First thing we're going to take a look at is the aspects of magic. Uh, now, basically, there are six primal aspects, air, earth, fire, water, order, and entropy. And uh, as it says right here, they're the basic building blocks for all the other aspects. Uh, now, compound aspects are created from other aspects. Um, for example, the example included in the book down here is Terra and Aqua creating life, which is Victus. So, uh, in order to get around to that, we're going to have to make a research table. In order to make the research table, we're going to have to make a table first. So the table's made just like this with any type of wood, uh, two wood planks, three wood slabs, just like this, as you might expect. That's how you make a table. So we're going to go ahead and make a couple of those and plop them into the world right here. So in order to finish your research table, you're going to need some scribing tools. So just like this, we're going to pull out one of these, right? And we're going to place the scribing tools on the table. Now, to make the scribing tools, uh, you use either a glass file, an ink sac, and a feather, or a glass bottle, an ink sac, and a feather. Now, the glass file is made with the same recipe as a glass bottle, except you add a piece of clay, and it will output eight rather than three, so it's much more efficient to go that route. Now that you've created the research table, go ahead and give it a right click and we'll take a look at the interface here. Uh, up here is the scribing tools that you placed on the table in order to create it. Now as you use the research table in order to uh, perform research, basically your scribing tools are going to use up ink. Uh, you can replenish them with an ink sack just like this, right, and it'll go back to full. Now, right here is actually where you'll place any research that you're trying to study. I'm going to actually pull this out uh, like this. So I need to grab some paper, just like that, and open up the Thaumonomicon. All right. And uh, if we go to, let's say, Alchemy, and just click on Nitor. Now, I, I, I happen to pick Nitor because it's a very simple example. Then we can come in. You'll see that one of my pieces of paper has been turned into a research notes, and my scribing tools have taken a little bit of durability damage. I put the research notes in here, and you'll see that there's this little mini game that appears on the right hand side. Now, in order to do this mini game, you're going to need research points, which are the little numbers here next to all of your primal aspects. So the next thing we're gonna look at is down here in the bottom left corner, this is where you can combine your research points in order to discover new aspects or simply create compound uh, aspects for your research points. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take Aqua and Terra, which are the two that were listed in the Thaumonomicon, and combine those together, and we're gonna create Victus, which is life. Mm, however, 
that still doesn't fill in this blank space over here. We've got to actually understand all of the aspects that are that are on this grid in order to proceed. I happen to know what this aspect is, but uh, rather than simply mixing it over here, I'm going to show you another way to discover new aspects and learn about the world around you. So we're going to come over here to this other blank table and I'm going to slap my wand on it and it's going to turn into an arcane workbench. Now the arcane workbench basically acts like a crafting table with the minor exception that it gives you the ability to draw magic from your wand, ours is empty by the way, uh, in order to create, in order to infuse magical V's essence into a crafting recipe. I should take a moment before we continue to talk about the difference between the three types of uh, ways that you can interact with aspects. The first we've gone over, that's research points. Now research points are basically useless aside from doing research in the research table and purchasing research which can be purchased from the Thaumonomicon. There are two other types of magical essence though which can occur in any type of aspect and that those are V's and Essentia. Now Essentia is sort of like distilled out aspects from physical objects, whereas V's is more of an ethereal power that comes out of nodes and you store in your wand. But what we really want to do is we want to make a thaumometer, which is uh, the instructions are on the artifice tab here. So basically you craft it on a crafting table, workbench, arcane workbench, doesn't matter. Uh, you need two gold ingots, a piece of glass, and uh, any two shards. Now the shards are Thaumcraft item. Basically, you're going to find them uh, inside of a world gen item called Infused Stone. Now Infused Stone, I've got some... I, I actually placed this down here. It didn't spawn down here naturally. But as you might be able to tell, it's actually very easy to see, even in the dark. Uh, this pattern here on the infused stone actually is very um, <laughs> it's very glow in the dark so to speak so you can see it very easily even from quite a distance okay so we've obtained some order shards so uh, let's see gonna put some gold ingot in here some glass right here by the way the other thing uh, that you that I might want to note about the arcane workbench is that when you leave the arcane workbench the items stored inside stay there so it has it does have a slight inventory um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these order shards in here and we're gonna create a thaumometer check that out so the thaumometer is actually a very basic very very basic but one of the most important tools in thaumcraft and uh, basically, it allows you to study the world around you and discover new aspects. Uh, as you can see, I've actually just discovered the aspect Herba by studying grass blocks. Now, if I open up my Thaumonomicon and I go to the article up here on aspects, you'll see it's glowing here. That's to notify you that there's new information available. Uh, you'll see that Herba is a compound of Victus and Terra. So if I hadn't actually... Uh, so let me go ahead and explain to you how this works by going and studying something I don't yet have the ability to understand. And that is going to be, oh, how about a crafting table? So if I try to study the crafting table and says to understand this, you need to study man. Now, the reason that happens is because there are some very complex compound aspects in the crafting table. And uh, basically, if you don't already have uh, knowledge of both of the aspects that are in those compound aspects, for example, I could not have studied Herba, right? I could not have learned Herba and therefore could not have studied grass blocks if I hadn't manually compounded Victus already. So it's very important early on to manually compound uh, research into Victus. So I'm going to go ahead and click on torch here. I'm going to give myself some torches and place one in the world just like this. We're going to study the torch now and that's going to unlock for me Lux, which happens to be exactly what I was looking for over here. So basically the way that this mini game works is you're going to want to take aspects that are either compounds of Lux or aspects that are inside of Lux 
in order to uh, connect these across this grid. So we're going to take, uh, let's see, Lux is Air and Ignis. I happen to know off the top of my head, but if you didn't know that, you could go after discovering Lux and check it in the Thaumonomicon. So basically, the way that I'm going to do this is we're going to uh, add Ignis in here. Now, basically, we just need to go from fire to another aspect that contains fire to another aspect, like fire again, and then back to another aspect that will connect to fire. It's very easy to connect fire to fire. Oops. And I've just done a mistake. Great. But, however, if you do make a mistake, say you put in something that doesn't connect to Lux and it's grayed out, then all you've got to do is click on it to remove it. You don't get your research points back unless you've done a specific type of research already that gives you a benefit like that. Um, but to start off with, you're just going to lose them if you make a mistake. So be careful. Place things in the right place the first time. So we're just going to go ahead and connect them just like this. Ta-da! Okay, and now I've created my research for Nitor. If I right-click on it, it'll go away, and uh, it will appear in my book. We can actually look at it and learn more. Um, so in order to create Nitor, the next thing I'm going to want is to create a crucible. Uh, so basically, in order to create a crucible, we're going to need to yeah, make an iron cauldron just like this all right and I'm gonna place that puppy in the world just like that and I'm gonna smack it with my wall with that, 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 that I'm gonna smack it with my wand so basically the function of the cauldron is to break an item down into essentia and allow you to uh, use that essentia to either change other items or be infused into other items which will produce a, a new output. So uh, instead of explaining it to you, I'm just going to show you. Uh, first of all, in order to do this, you're going to need to fill up your crucible with water. And then you're going to actually need to place under your crucible um, either lava or fire. Now, if the fire is going to go out shortly after you <laughs> light it, it's not going to be very effective. So if you want to use fire, you have to have nether rack, basically. Um, and otherwise, I would advise lava. Now, once it starts bubbling here, you'll know it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at Nitor. We're going to need three potentia three Lux, and three Ignis. Okay, so at this point, while we're talking about uh, aspects inside of items, I should mention that if you hold Shift over an item and that you've already studied with the thermometer, it'll show you what aspects are inside of it, and it'll also list that item by the aspect in your Thaumonomicon right here whenever you hover over that aspect. With that, with that mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and throw a coal on the ground and study the item entity. Now that's two Potentia and two Ignis, which is pretty much just what I was looking for. Because I already know that torches have Lux and only Lux. However, I'm also going to need some Glowstone, which is what you might call the reagent. Now basically what you'll see is whenever I throw in my coal... It'll, it'll dissolve, and uh, it'll start. some bubbles will start rising out of my crucible. Those bubbles are actually going to be similar colors to the aspects themselves and represent the... Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. Okay. I need to clear that out. Don't like that stuff. It's not very good for your health. Um, but we'll mention that later. So I've thrown in a piece of coal... Uh, I'm actually going to throw in another, and then we're going to need two torches. Three, four, five, six, and another coal. There we go. Now we should be able to create three Nitor. Nope. Very wrong about that. I've certainly done something wrong with my crucible here, but that's all right. I've got all this energy in there that I don't know what to do with, but I'm just going to shift, right click, on it and that's going to release the energy into the atmosphere this is something you don't want to do very often uh, which is why the next piece of research you want to go after is going to be the um, goggles of revealing 
So I'm going to walk you through obtaining the goggles of revealing uh, with very little trouble. But um, first I'm going to show you what Nitor does. Nitor is basically a magical source of light. Pop. And it looks very cool. It's not very much different than glowstone or a torch or anything like that. But um, looks very cool. Produces light. So if I made it nighttime, as you can see. Okay, so I'm going to click on goggles of revealing. All right, there we go. And we're going to open this back up and place that research note in here. Oh no, we have no idea what we're going to need for this. But tell you what, I actually do because I'm a cheater who goes and looks things up on the internet. So um, we're gonna scan a couple of we're gonna scan a couple of things with the thermometer, such as some chests, for example. So let's go ahead and uh, just like that, scan the chest, and I'm gonna unlock arbor, which is wood, and vacuos, which is vacuum or void or empty space, one or the other, any of those. The next thing I want to take a look at is actually gonna be this order shard. Now it'll work with any of the shards, really. Uh, I unlocked vitreous, which is crystalline, basically crystals, and precantatio, which is the aspect of magic. Now the aspect of magic happens to be one of the three corners of this um, piece of research. Now the next one that I need, uh, it's actually relatively difficult to find. It's rather rare. But I do know how to make it, so I'm going to take Precantadio and Air and combine them into Aurum, just like this. Okay, now the next one that I need is not quite so easy. Uh, first, I'm going to want to take Victus here, Life, and combine it with Perditio to create the decaying of life, Mortis, or Death. Next, I want to take life and death together and combine them to create spiritus. Now at this point, I can take a piece of paper and my thermometer, and I now have everything I need in order to understand cognitio. Cognitio is basically uh, brain power or thought. You'll see cognitio is fire and spiritus. So I guess... I guess the source of knowledge is having a soul on fire. Yes. And now that I have Cognitio understood, I can come over here. Shouldn't be far. Oh, hey, there's one. Okay. And study up a natural Minecraft flower. And that's going to also give me census. Now I have all of the aspects required for this. Now I happen to know, if we go and look at the Thaumonomicon, Census is air and spiritus, just like Aurum is air and precantatio. So if we take, we're gonna take and combine these with air, just like this. So precantatio is potentia and vacuos. Now vacuos connects very easily with air. So now all I've got to do is place Precatatio right there and Vacuos right there. We have discovered the goggles of revealing. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, read that research, add it to my Thaumonomicon, and go take a look. Now, in order to make the goggles of revealing, we're going to need these ingredients place them in an arcane workbench, and we're also going to need to have this much Vs in the wand that we're going to use. Now, technically, we're actually going to need 10% more than that. Okay, so now that we actually need to have some magic in our wand, um, do I have it on me? Yes, we do. Okay, so now that we actually need to have some magic in the wand, uh, we're going to go ahead and go over the two ways of collecting Vs and storing it in your wand. So the first way 
uh, and the simplest way without having to create the goggles of revealing or go around studying everywhere with a thermometer is actually to uh, simply slay some monsters. Um, now, the the actual Vs that you get from each monster is going to depend on what aspects it has. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Uh, but the easiest way to get started... Oops, I didn't want zombies. Nope, I wanted skeletons. Okay, so I'm choosing skeletons here because uh, of the overworld mobs, skeletons actually, uh, they're very easy and they drop everything that we need. So I'm gonna place this skeleton here, kill him real quick. You'll actually notice that he drops some uh, small clear orbs. Um, now, if I go and look at my wand, you'll see that I absorbed a little bit of Terra energy. It's actually also displayed on the inventory, and if you hold Shift, it will show you uh, more details. Okay, so I'm just going to take down a couple of skeletons, just like this. Ah, now that one dropped a much better uh, stock. Actually, now I have all five um, but if I hold shift, you can see I don't quite have enough yet to create my goggles of revealing. So I'm going to kill a couple more skeletons, um, and I'll be back in just a moment. Ah, die, you die. Okay, so that should do it, right? Uh, five, ten, five, two, oh, I don't have enough fire yet, um, now, I did, when I was doing my testing earlier, uh, I found something interesting, and that is overworld mobs. It's very difficult to acquire fire Vs from overworld mobs. All the others are fairly easy. Um, however, fire, you can only get from uh, zombies, creepers, skeletons, and witches in the overworld. Um, oh, also villagers, but you don't really want to kill them. Witches, however, I found were the best, uh, having the possibility to drop up to five at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, goodness, this is a suicide mission. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and kill this stupid, ugly, wart-nosed witch here. And, uh, I didn't get any fire Vs, unfortunately, so I've got to kill another stupid, ugly, wart-nosed witch. And die. Okay, got a little bit of fire Vs there. Still only at four fire Vs. I should mention that those little, uh, those little aspect orbs that are dropped, that's the official name, aspect orb. Um, those aspect orbs are actually, um, they're only, it, you can only absorb them as long as your wand is on your hotbar. Now, you don't have to select your wand, you can just you know, stay on your sword or whatever, but it, it won't be absorbed in, into your wand if it's up in your inventory. It's got to be on your hotbar. But there's another way to put Vs in your hotbar, and that is an R node. Now, you might not be able to see it quite yet, but if I take my thermometer, there we go. Now you can see there's definitely an R node here. There actually happens to be another one in that creepy thing over there. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, the Aura nodes have aspects in them. If you study them with your uh, thermometer or are wearing goggles of revealing, you can tell exactly what aspects are in them. Now, as you can see, there's 27 air and 30 ignis in this Aura node. And I happened to sit here and spawn Aura nodes over and over again with the creative item until I found, until I created one that had ignis. It was actually quite a challenge. So, um... If you can't find one anywhere near you, you're probably going to be stuck killing mobs until later on. Now, basically, you want to take your wand and point it at that aura node, and you're going to start draining Vs from it and into your wand, as you can see. Now, if I go back and look at it again, you'll see that the, the, the amount of aspects in that node have actually decreased significantly as a result. Uh, you, so you actually, so these numbers that you see here are actually representations of how much power is in the node, and for every point that you drain with your wand, you're going to end up draining a point out of the node. 
Now, as long as you don't drain too much and damage the node, they'll slowly replenish over time. But uh, as you can see, I now clearly have more than enough to finish off my goggles of revealing. So I'm going to put my wand in here, go back to the Thaumonomicon and look at that recipe again. Need to get some leather and another thaumometer. So, thaumometer and leather. And so we're just going to take thaumometer, thaumometer, uh, gold, gold, leather, right? Okay. And so as you can see, it displays the cost in Vs around the edges once I've actually created the right pattern inside. And the goggles of revealing here are uh, available for us to take out. You'll see that it takes those points away from the wand. We're going to go ahead and put on these goggles of revealing and discuss what they do. So while you're wearing the goggles of revealing, you actually save 5% of your V's cost. So that's going to reduce um, that's going to reduce the effect of the inefficiency of your initial iron capped wooden wand. So basically, now that I have the goggles of revealing, any essentia that are in my crucible will be revealed to me. Um, now, one thing you may have noticed is that over time, right, this essentia is basically boiling out and going away and uh, being released into the atmosphere, unfortunately. Uh, so whenever you're doing something with the crucible, you've got to do it quickly uh, or else it's just going to dissipate out into the atmosphere and possibly produce flux, which is bad, uh, although I'm not really going to go over the full extent of what flux does today. So we're going to just go ahead and uh, toss in our coal here and some torches, and there we go. So I went ahead and created two Nitors. I made a little mistake there and threw some extra stuff in, but, you know, whatever. It happens sometimes, you know. So, uh... There you go. That makes your uh, that makes your crucibling much more effective. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my wand and straight up empty that. So I'm gonna come over here and shift left click, shift right click. I mean to say, that'll empty everything out into the atmosphere, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, guys, so before I end this getting started with Thomcraft Mod Spotlight, uh, there's definitely one more thing that we have to cover we've got to make the wand do something special so we're going to get research for the uh, wand foci research plop it in here we've got Precantadio and ignis so uh, basically we want to take uh, let's see Precantadio is made of potentia and vacuos potentia links back to ignis very nicely so why don't we just do this just like that. All right, perfect, very good. That was super easy. So we're gonna go ahead and click that discovery and open up the Thaumonomicon. You'll see that it actually opens up a couple new uh, researches. All of these researches, as a matter of fact, uh, require the wand foci to be unlocked first. So basically, what we want is to place these things in an arcane workbench and uh, it's going to consume this much energy from our wand. How much do I have enough? No. So we're going to put this fire charge in the middle and these shards in the corners, just like this, and quartz. Okay. And as you can see, it says we're going to need 20 and 10, but that's actually a lie. We're going to need 22 and 11 once I. Oh. Oh, right. Actually, slightly less than that because I'm wearing the goggles of revealing, which reduce that 10% uh, hampering by 5%. So there we go. We've created a wand focus now. So let's go ahead and take this wand right back out of there. And uh, now all you've got to do is hover over your wand on your heart hot bar. So have your wand equipped and held in your hand and then hold the letter F. And you'll see that you can pick just like this, I do believe. Uh, so you hold F, it brings up the interface, and there you go. I can, boom, just like that. Now in the top left corner, you'll see that it displays uh, exactly what one focus I have equipped. And um, let me go ahead and 
fill up with firepower from my uh, node up here, conveniently placed. So now that I've got plenty of firepower, let's go ahead and get ourselves an unwilling volunteer. How about a, um, how about a chicken? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get some chickens. But before I do that, I actually want to, uh, let's see here, da da da. I actually want to study that chicken whenever I can, whenever I summon it. But, unfortunately, as you can see, it says to understand this, you need to study things that move. Now, that's a very subtle hint that I need to, well, actually, not very subtle at all, very obvious hint uh, to someone who knows Thomcraft, that I need to first study Motus. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just study this trapdoor to unlock Motus. Now, come up here and study my chicken and unlock Bestia. I've also discovered a clue to new research by studying the chicken. So let's go ahead and show you what this does. Ah, it just sets my chicken on fire and I get a nice piece of roasted chicken for dinner. Nom, nom, nom. Now for fun, let's try it this way. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant, I love it. Okay, so that's how it works on chickens, but what about something just a little bit tougher? Uh, let's go ahead and summon up a zombie, and I'm going to give that a study before I fight it, and unlock Humanus. But let's go ahead and kill this guy. As you can see, it actually doesn't take too long to make quick work of that zombie. Uh, let's go ahead and spawn about three of them in. I've just got to back off a little bit, keep him far away from me, and run out of firepower. Yes! So I'll go ahead and switch to my sword, like any good thaumaturge, and completely avoid magic. <laughs> Alright, so that is just about going to cover getting started in Thaumcraft. We covered a lot of the most basic aspects, in fact, all the way up to Humanus uh, by the end here. And uh, we covered the research table, the arcane workbench, um, we covered the basics of the Crucible, Essentia, Vs, and uh, all sorts of other fun things. So next time we're going to go a lot more in-depth into what you can do with the various types of wand foci. Uh, we're also going to talk about warp and exactly what that is, as well as how to progress further into Thaumcraft. Uh, we're also going to go over the arcane infusion crafting process, which is, um, well, I think you're I think you're really gonna like it, but it's also <laughs> kind of complex uh, whenever you first learn how to do it. So yeah, I hope to see you next time in part two of this uh, Thaumcraft mod review special. Uh, if you have any suggestions for what I should have in the next episode, or there's anything that I missed that you really think should have been in the first episode, or like right at the beginning, or I should have told you straight up front, you just let me know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to click subscribe. Hey, thanks so much for watching, I'm gonna shoot you with fire. Going back to my set, going back to my set, look at that creepy totem, look at that creepy totem, yeah, going back to the set, oh, 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 yeah, 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 oh, that might be an outtake, I might, I might put that at the end of the video, just like that. And I'm gonna smack it with my wand. With blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna smack it with my wand. Smack it with my wand. Smack, 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 smack it with my wand. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> hey, look, that <laughs> that gaseous flux is still <laughs> floating into the sky. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take Precantadio and air and combine them into Arum, just like this. Nom 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 nom